Hey guys, so we are on Psalm 31 this week. Um, you know, the treasure chest is just a little bit complicated. Um, and I just kind of want to take you through um, some of the tips that will help you to get it kind of just correctly drawn on your page. Um, if you look at the top of the treasure chest here, you see that the, the two lines have to be parallel. So that top of the treasure chest and then um, almost imagining where the coins are kind of coming up and overflowing into the top, that those have to be parallel. Then um, the, so you know from the drawing doodle where you're drawing, um, you're, you're drawing your box, the treasure box, just use a ruler and make sure that your lines are parallel because if you get them just a little bit wonky, it's not going to be believable to the viewer if that makes sense. So if your top and your bottom lines are, if you kind of followed them along, at some point they're going to interject um, or intersect, then it's it's not going to look quite, quite right. So just as you're drawing the tops and the bottoms of all of your lines, just make sure that each, they all are parallel to each other. So those two lines on the top of the treasure chest that are not the rounded ones, you know, not the arcs, those have to be parallel. Then if you look at the side of side box, side piece of the treasure chest, those have to be parallel. And then the front piece of the treasure chest there has to be the top and the bottom have to be parallel. Now I know that you're going to kind of overtake those lines with uh, those the gold coins, but it, you still have to get it drawn correctly first and then put those gold coins kind of on top of it because if you don't get that right from the get-go um, It's gonna look like it's gonna like fallen in on itself or you know something like that um, so the crazy part the crazy one is on the top, you know, you see the side of the um, Of the treasure chest there with like a little silver handle on it and then, so the top of that panel has to be parallel with the side that's under the coins. Does that make sense? So you've got three lines that are parallel. On that side where you've got the, um, the silver handle, that bottom line has to be parallel, the top line of that side has to be parallel, and then you switch over all the way over to the far end of the um, treasure chest and make that line parallel to those guys. So, um, and if you get all of that kind of drawn in correctly, then when you go back in and you put your gold coins on top, it, it, you're putting it on top of a solid foundation that makes sense. So use a ruler, um, take your time and, and sort of get it sketched in. Um, I wanna mention to you uh, that well, here I have to go back in and put in some texture because if you look at it, it almost looks like the treasure chest is being overtaken by an amoeba so or like flubber or something. So I'm just going in and kind of drawing those circles in there willy-nilly here, there, and everywhere to sort of just define the space a little bit and break it up so it doesn't look quite so much like an amoeba. Uh, in my head, in my imaginings, I imagine there's like rubies and emeralds and sapphires in there as well. But I don't want to draw them per se. I don't want them to, I just kind of want to have the sparkles of the colors kind of shining out. Um, not so much defining very many spaces in that, in the, in the amoeba. Um, if you want to, um, you sort of could just draw a flat oval and then a triangle down below it. And that could kind of simulate a gem of some sort. But I was... Um, I was just going for glimpses of color. There are pearl necklaces kind of hanging off the side of it, so it just looks like it's um, overflowing. Um, I do want to mention too, if you look on the doodles, I've, I've started putting in a little bit of gray, and that is to help you as you're painting to tell you where the shadows are going to be. So exactly where I've laid in my shadows or where I put them out and laid them out for you in the doodle. So that, that's an extra help that's on the doodle sheets. Um, here as I was drying it, I'm not happy. I don't like the way that looks. I, I, I should have dried it before I did the splattering and it got all just all spread out and I don't like it. So I'm just going to go back in here and sort of reclaim out that paint just using water and pot like doppling it up and so that it kind of just goes back to a more pristine kind of look i didn't it was too messy but looking before 
So um, just getting that all dry. And interesting to, no to note here is that I use Dorland's, D-O-R-L-A-N-D-S, Dorland's wax medium over my pages so that they just, they set. It will set a watercolor marker. It will set, um, it will set water, watercolor, water mediums so that they don't keep reactivating or, or smudge or anything like that. So, but what happens is when you're drawing the opposite side of the page that you've used the Dorland's wax medium, you just have to be careful because you're reactivating that wax then. You're kind of warming up that wax again. So just be careful of that. That's why I kept trying pushing back the page to see what was happening with my girl on the back where the Dorland's wax was. Um, here, you know, I always go in with my colored pencil. I'm using a black here to kind of just outline those like rivets. I imagine they'd be like silver rivets holding the treasure chest together. Um, I used an indigo blue to come around the pearls to kind of define them out a little bit and just uh, make them pop a little bit more. Um, here, I'm I'm just using the brown, a brown pencil to bring out some of those coins. Um, I want it to look like like a cornucopia of treasures and, and blessings, right, in overflowing out of that treasure box. Um, but I also don't want it to look like just a complete mess, you know. So there's a fine line there <laughs> between um, filling up the treasure chest and just making it look like chaos. So um, I'm just trying to get that that balance sort of going. Um, if you noticed when I came back in with my paint splatters, I did it on a completely dry page so that they just stayed put and it wasn't this big mess of blobs that were just kind of going off and all over the page. Um, adding in just a little bit of black, my black highlights to just make it pop a little bit. You know I have to put my ziggity zaggity lines in. Wouldn't be Elisa if it didn't have the ziggity zaggities in. So I'm adding in my ziggity zaggities and my um, little dots. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to outline everything in black this time um, because I don't want that blob to become so... Uh, so defined that it, it really looks like, you know, um, this is the blob. So I, I've just kind of gone in and put a couple of coins outlined in black. I did outline the outside of it, but then in the um, inside, I just took a couple of coins here and there and sort of outlined them a little bit. I'm using a colored pencil this time to do the lettering because I'm kind of keeping with this whole, it's sort of a little bit of a subdued palette and it's not real bright. There's no kind of real dark darks or dark blacks in there. So if I come in with a black marker, I feel like it's going to overpower the drawing. So I'm just using an indigo blue Prismacolor. Um, and I will come back in with, um, with a black pencil to sort of give it that shadow. Um, I thought I was done, but you know what? Then I wasn't. This is why I do not like Prismacolors anymore. Um, had to sharpen my pencil, went to sharpen it, and it, it all broke back down again. It, it, Prismacolors are just tough to work with at this point. There's no quality standards like there used to be. So um, I did not get a good point, but I just kind of went with what I could get on it and made it work. So, um, so you know, it's kind of looking like it could be done, right? But no not in my world. So we're going to add just a tinge touch of white here there um, to, to make it pop just a little bit more. And then do you see how it needed a border? It just looked like it was falling off the page. So if I just give it some sort of a border, it centers it on the page. It keeps your eye. It just gives it a complete look, a completed look. It, it just makes it feel like um, it's done. So I put in my little dots and that's it guys. That's it. That's it. Um, so this is week 31. Um, the treasure chest of, of good things that he gives us that are overflowing. And I want to remind you about Salty Sidewalks, um, at a ministry where we intentionally spread the gospel through the arts. Thanks guys. Bye.